Our country desperately needs genuine leadership. But for genuine leadership to emerge, we must first recognize just what genuine leadership is, so that we will not be fooled by imposters, and second, we must have admiration for genuine leadership, thereby creating an environment in which genuine leadership can emerge. Four broad characteristics we believe define genuine leadership. We believe a genuine leader would be nonpartisan, unaffiliated with any political party, and independent from any ideology. An individual who would never think to sully him or herself with divisive partisanship, an individual who would never subordinate his or her understanding to party talking points, an individual who would never think to give his or her allegiance to party donors and base supporters rather than to America's common good. Such an individual would sneer at the thought of being a poster child or front for the collection of special interests and pressure groups that comprise a political party. A genuine leader would be an authentic, real person who speaks with candor, hardly an individual of mind to be subordinated to a mythological image and controlled by pollsters, consultants, and handlers. Second, we believe a genuine leader would be a person of serious thought and learning who could never accept the intellectual anesthetic of the pre-packaged set of political beliefs and easy answers every ideology peddles. We note that the Founding Fathers were all well-educated and seriously thoughtful about the common good. An individual's lack of extensive reading and reflection on the numerous problems facing our country, a particular tendency of Republicans, should not be enthroned as a badge of honor. By the same token, a genuine leader would not display the hubris of intellectual arrogance that would descend into condescension towards fellow citizens. This tendency towards the conviction that I know better what's best for people, irrespective of what they themselves want, seems a particular problem of Democrats. Third, we believe a genuine leader would also be a living example of a profile in political courage. He or she would never resort to the demagogic trite that panders to ignorance or perceived self-interest to win elective office or to curry political favor, would never compromise his or her search for truth in order to be more popular for electoral gain. Unlike slick politicians, who merely follow the momentary direction of the political wind, a genuine leader would pay all of us a sincere compliment by having confidence in our ability to come to terms with a measure of substantive policy and afford us high respect by focusing our attention on the hard problems we need to confront but which we would prefer to ignore. Fourth, we believe a genuine leader would be an educator who possesses intellectual command of the issues likely to come before the presidency and who also possesses the ability to explain these complex topics with concision and clarity so that all may understand, but also in a manner that doesn't sacrifice comprehensiveness. In an eagerness to share, a genuine leader would present tentative solutions while at the same time encouraging public feedback and genuine active participation. Having highlighted what genuine leadership is, it becomes easy to see that a forlorn hope best describes our wait for genuine leadership to rise from within the Democratic or Republican Party. A nonpartisan cannot emerge from within a partisan organization because an honest search for truth and candid speech is not permitted to a party's candidates. Serious thought is impeded by the narrow confines of party ideology. Political courage does not win party victories, and political education would expose the party's shenanigans. So if we look to a political party to supply us with genuine leadership, we're bound to be disappointed. 
If we no longer have leaders that rise to the stature of some of America's early presidents, perhaps it is because we place too much value on superficialities, money, celebrity, television. If we restrict our vote for a candidate on criteria irrelevant to genuine leadership, demanding he or she be a professed believer in one's religious faith, or share one's political ideology, or appear to be a typical American like oneself, we would miss a leader like George Washington, whose lack of formal religious devotion, lack of political affiliation, and atypicality would render him unelectable. If we value celebrity, glib answers, and the banal statements of political correctness, we would likely miss a leader like John Adams, whose salty candor would render him unelectable. If we are seduced by articulate speech or quick wit, we would miss a leader like Thomas Jefferson, whose lisp, high squeaky voice, and poor public speaking ability would render him unelectable. One historian has written that James Madison had the frail and discernibly fragile appearance of a career librarian or schoolmaster. Not only did he look like the epitome of insignificance, diminutive, colorless, sickly, he was also paralyzingly shy, the kind of guest at a party who instinctively searched out the corners of a room. If we restrict our vote to charismatic candidates, we would miss a leader like James Madison, whose lack of charisma would render him unelectable. If we are entranced by the superficiality of a fabricated image, accompanied by telegenic good looks, we would miss a leader like Abraham Lincoln, who would also be unelectable.